So um, in terms of know your rights, I'd like to do it in terms of the um, order of uh, interaction with police. So from conversation to detention to arrest and then search of car, vehicle, or car, home, search of you by police and what your basic rights are. And uh, as I'm sure you're, you're taking from a lot of the conversation we had today, your rights in the street are very different from your rights in sort of the textbooks that I studied in law school. Um, and so uh, most of the accountability for these rights comes through, or is supposed to come through the complaints process, or it comes through when you go to court, uh, evidence will be excluded and police don't respect your rights. Um, so when you're having, uh, when you first interact with a police officer, polite conversation, um, you don't know whether they're doing an investigation or not because police officers are trained to use polite conversation to get information about what's happening in a situation. So the way you can tell whether they're investigating or not, and these are your basic rights, this isn't necessarily how to have a polite conversation with someone, just so you know. Um, you can say, uh, am I free to go? Am I free to leave? And if they say, yeah, go ahead, you're free to leave, you know you're just having a polite conversation. If they say, no, you're not free to go, um, then you know you're being detained. So anytime you're dealing with police, you have the right to remain silent. You don't have to talk to them, you don't have to give them any information. Uh, they can send you a letter saying, come to the detachment on this day. You don't have to go to the detachment. You don't have to uh, provide them with information. They can phone call, give you a phone call, you're a witness. We need your statement on this. You don't have to, you never have to talk to a police officer uh, with only one exception. If you're under arrest or they're trying to give you a ticket or something like that or appearance notice, you have to identify yourself. If you don't identify yourself, it can ground an offense called obstruct police. It's way easier to prove obstruct police than it is to prove any other offense, drinking and driving, uh, assaults, whatever. So what happens most often is they try to arrest you for the original offense, you don't identify yourself, and then they replace it with obstruct police because you haven't identified yourself. So if they're trying to arrest you, uh, or they're trying to give you a ticket or appearance notice, always identify yourself. And you don't have to have a card, like you know, like this, like you have to have a card, you don't have to have a card. You say your name and your date of birth. And giving someone a false name uh, is also obstruct police, so don't give police uh, incorrect information in that situation. So if you're being detained, you still have the right to remain silent. Police can do a pat-down search, which is outside of the pockets. They can do a pat-down looking for things like um, guns or knives. If they feel something soft in your pocket, uh, there's a case in which the Supreme Court can a a baggie of pot that someone had in a hoodie pocket. Uh, they can't go through your pockets looking for that kind of thing. This is just for weapons, and only on the outside of the clothes. They can't go through your bag, through your car, any of that. It's just to make sure they're safe while they're talking to you that they're not going to get stabbed or shot or whatever. So then they can ask you whatever questions they like. And you can say, you know what, I'm not going to answer your questions. I'm going to remain silent. Um, and then they're, they're going to make a decision. Either they're going to release you uh, or um, from detention, or they're going to arrest you. They can arrest you when they have reasonable and probable grounds to believe you've committed an offense. So uh, reasonable and probable grounds is a legal test, but basically it means that they have some information to believe that you, you've been involved in a specific offense, that you've actually committed the offense, and they can arrest you for that. On detention, they can't just detain anybody that they like, just stop anyone going down the street and ask them a bunch of questions. They need to meet a legal test on that as well. It's not quite as strict as arrest, but they need to be investigating a specific offense that is, they know that something specific happened. Not this is a high crime area, or we know this area is a, a high drug area, or whatever. A specific offense, we got a call that there was a break and enter here, and something that connects you to the offense. You're a witness, you were in the area at the time, you match the description of the person who did the break and enter. Uh, it can't just be race, it has to be something more than just race. Um, so there's something that connects you with the offense, and there's a specific offense that they can detain you and do this questioning thing. So if they decide to arrest you, you'll know you're under arrest, they'll, put, they'll make contact with you and they'll say, you're under arrest. They're supposed to tell you the reason that you're being arrested. Uh, they don't always, but they're supposed to. So you can say, why am I being arrested? And they should tell you, unless it's obvious why you're being arrested. Um, and then uh, once you're arrested, your rights change again, they can do a full search. Only when you're arrested can they go into your pockets, into your bags. They can do a search of the immediate area around where you're arrested, so like inside your vehicle, for example. Um, but uh, but that's the only time they can do the pockets, bag, all that search. So if you haven't been arrested, and they start forcing you into search and say, no, I don't consent to the search. And there's an important difference between consent and resisting. So you say, I don't consent to the search, but which is uh, consent, and resisting is like wrestling with your bag with a police officer that can grab an assault police charge. So you need to be really careful to know the difference between those two things. So you can say, I don't consent to the search, I don't consent to you going through my bag. Uh, I don't agree with letting you do that. 
Um, that is uh, different from wrestling with a police officer over your bag. So they're, you're rested, they're going through your stuff, um, they'll take you to the cells. They can't do strip searches with absolutely everyone that they arrest. It's pretty clear the Supreme Court of Canada has set that out. They can only do a strip search if they have a reason to believe that you're hiding something on your body, whether it's a gun or drugs or some other evidence. Uh, they can't do routine strip searches. And if they do have that reason to believe you're hiding something on your body, then you have the right to request someone that is uh, the same uh, gender as you. They can't have males searching females, females searching males. Um, so that's the whole process up to uh, being put into cells um, on a temporary basis in a green man facility, cells that get attached with that kind of thing. When you get past that, um, there are issues of searching in cars, homes, and your homes. So inside your car, when you're pulled over by police, you have to identify yourself, you have to prove that you're uh, uh, certified to drive a vehicle in British Columbia. Okay? And you have to prove that the vehicle's insured as well. You don't have to answer any other questions. You don't have to answer how many drinks have you had today. You don't have to answer whatever. You can realize that uh, refusing to answer any questions, where are you coming from, where are you going, might make your life a little more difficult. But you don't have to answer any of those questions. Um, so the police officer can be asking you and say, no, I'd like to remain silent. After you've proven that you're fit to drive the vehicle, that you have the driver's license and that you have the insurance for the vehicle. In terms of searching the car, if they can see something through the windows in plain view, they don't have to pretend they don't see the open six pack on the passenger seat. Uh, that can ground the search. Um, but other than that, they can't say, uh, I want to look in the back seat, I want to look under those blankets, I want to look in the cab of your pickup truck, whatever. Uh, you have to either give them permission or they have to have a warrant for it. You can say, No, I'm sorry, I don't consent to you searching the passenger cab. I don't consent to you searching the back of my pickup. I don't consent to you searching the trunk of my car. Um, and usually they phrase it something like, uh, would you mind if I had a look in your trunk, please? And it sounds kind of like an instruction, but kind of like a question. I could say, yeah, yeah actually, I do mind. I'm sorry. Uh, you can't have a look in my trunk, and you can refuse them to consent to do that. So that's a car. If you're a passenger in a vehicle, you don't have to identify yourself, again, unless they're giving you a ticket for not wearing a seatbelt or something. But just being a passenger in a car, even where the driver's arrested, you don't have to identify yourself unless you're facing arrest yourself or unless they're trying to give you a ticket yourself. Um, in terms of your home, police can only go into your home in a number of circumstances. First of all, you give them permission. And for all of these things, you can waive your rights at any time and say, I'll answer your questions, I'll ID myself, I'll let you look through my bag, I'll let you search my home or my car. You can always agree to it. And you can also change your mind. They can be going through the trunk and say, you know what? I've changed my mind, I don't want to give you consent to search my trunk anymore, please stop searching the trunk, and then they're supposed to stop searching the trunk. You can withdraw your consent, you can say, I've answered your questions, but I don't want to answer any more questions. Once you started talking, doesn't mean you have to keep talking, you can stop at any time. So consent is one way they can come into your house. If they're chasing someone, they're in hot pursuit of someone, they can come into your house, and that person runs into your house, they can chase that person into your house and arrest them. But that doesn't let them search your house, that just lets them take the person out of your house. Uh, if there's a drop 911 call from your home, so someone calls 911 from the landline in your home, or there's some other way police have of knowing that a phone in your home has called 911, uh, they can come in and make sure that the people in the house are safe. Um, if there's an emergency, your house is on fire, uh, they can run in and try to put the fire out or rescue your cat or whatever, they don't have to get a search warrant for that. And the last is if there's a search warrant. There are two kinds of warrants, there's a knock warrant and a no-knock warrant. For a knock warrant, they've got a knock at the door, you come to the door, you have a right to look at the search warrant. We've heard here today that that doesn't always happen. You should be able to verify that they've got the right address, because sometimes they get the wrong address. You've got to make sure that they're executing the warrant at the right time, because the warrants have dates and times that they're good for. If they're outside of those times, they're not allowed to come in. Um, it's not a license forever to come search your house. And you've got to make sure it's signed by a judge, so there should be a signature at the bottom from a justice of the peace or a judge. So you can, you can inspect the warrant for all those things, and then once you have, uh, make sure that what's being searched is actually what is outlined on the warrant. So the search warrant is for the garden shed on the property. That doesn't mean they get to search the whole house. It means they only get to search the garden shed. And so you can limit, you can say, no, you don't have a warrant for that, you can't search that, I don't consent to you searching that. So those are the ways they can come into your house, either by consent, drop 911 call, chasing someone, emergency, or warrant. On the search warrant, they can go through your house, they can go through everything in your house that the warrant allows, um, and you are not allowed to interfere with them doing that. And if you do interfere, you can be arrested for the police.
Does anyone have any specific questions about the stuff that I presented or any specific scenario that you're not sure about your rights on that you wanted to have answered um, that I can answer for you? 